When you hear the name the RSPCA, what's the first thing you think of? An animal charity, most likely. Well, several Conservative MPs believe the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has become more than that and say it's become too involved in animal rights politics. In Westminster Hall, one MP said the RSPCA was possibly the most prolific private prosecutor in the country and accused it of heavy-handedness. He gave an example. Pauline Spore, a pensioner from Manchester, was convicted and tagged for not putting down her old dog with arthritis. She admitted in court that her actions were misguided, but said she could not bear to put him down as he was her constant companion. Wouldn't, in those circumstances, a quiet word from the RSPCA have resolved the problem just as effectively and at considerably, considerably less cost? In, in, in a way, the whole thrust of this debate is to, is to highlight what uh, I think the public is increasingly aware of, which is this gulf between the, the very good activity on the ground of RSPCA inspectors, who we all know and we all work with and we all value and do good things uh, in our communities, with an, who, whose principal function is animal welfare, and the leadership, it seems, of the organisation, yeah. whose principal function appears to be animal rights. Absolutely. And I think yeah, yeah. that the animal rights agenda is compromising the animal welfare agenda on the ground, leading to precisely yeah. the sort of examples yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. uh, that the RSPCA has limited funds, like all charities. Those of us who have worked with animals all our lives welcome the presence of local RSPCA officers who are able to give advice, help and support to people who manage animals. Less of that, uh, le less of that is happening because more money is being spent in other ways. Isn't the solution further legislation I'm sure, I'm sure the Honourable Member would disagree with me, but isn't the solution further legislation to make it easier for the CPS and for the police to actually be able to prosecute people who are currently breaking the law? Uh, because at the moment, then they're, they're not able to, and that's why the RSPCA are feeling it necessary to take out these private prosecutions. The, the more I listen to the Honourable Williamson. Member, the more I'm convinced that um, what he's talking about this morning is a smokescreen for the attack on the RSPCA for having the temerity to prosecute the Prime Minister's hunt. Isn't that the real reason why you brought this debate today? Yeah. Yeah. I, the Honourable Gentleman omitted one declaration of interest, which is his Vice Presidency of the League Against Cruel Sports, so in a sense, my response would be, my response would be he, would, he would say that, wouldn't he? For most of my life, I was a huge supporter of the RSPCA while I was a member of the National Assembly quite often, and chair of the relevant committee, quite often the advice of the RSPCA was hugely beneficial, and it was a big part in terms of our taking decisions. But in my mind, it was always an animal welfare body, and that's how I always saw, that's how I always saw it. But I must admit, over recent, well, recently, I'm finding it now, to be what one might loosely describe as an animal rights body. The personal support has it, it disappeared. And I speak uh, with, uh, from a constituency who had an MP, Peter Freeman, who introduced a bill in 1935 to ban hunting with dogs. It took a long time to, for Parliament to agree that that practice was unacceptable, along with bear baiting and other barbarous activities that used animals as objects uh, for sport and entertainment. But we've got that far, and those that lost that debate are coming back now and trying to refight uh, the battle by attacking the splendid work of the RSPCA. They were absolutely right to prosecute. It's breaking the law. Like the vast majority of members of the public, I strongly support the Hunting Act. I'm not afraid of using the H word. Um, and I'm committed to strengthening its provisions as well as seeing the ban on the use of dogs in chasing and killing wild mammals rigorously upheld. And as the Honourable Member uh, said, as with other legislation designed to protect animals or, or anything else, enforcement is critical. And that's why bringing prosecutions is so important. And the RSPCA is uniquely placed to carry out that task. You can have a prosecution brought before the court, and it's for the magistrate to stop it if necessary. There are checks and balances before warrants are issued, before, bef you know, before either it's a search warrant or anything else. You know, there are checks and balances always within our system. The RSPCA, in, 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 in our view, do a very good job and are bringing forward prosecutions on behalf of the public and ensuring that we remain a civilised society and that it is for the courts to ensure that any prosecutions are not brought, un brought wrongly. Although most prosecutions are now conducted by public prosecuting authorities, the right to bring a private prosecution remains, 
preserved by Parliament in the Prosecution of Offences Act 1985. And speaking personally, I once threatened to bring a private prosecution when I was dissatisfied that the police were not taking action, which did at least lead to my getting a proper explanation from the police as to why they were behaving in the way they did. So actually, I believe it's rather a fundamental and important right that we have in a free society. It allows an individual to bring a prosecution when the state, for whatever reason, does not. The prosecutions by the RSPCA are, however, just that, private prosecutions. They have no public or special status as a prosecutor. Dominic Grieve. 